All right, guys, time for our Dan H. Roll Call. Black Beauty, checking in. Police Jeep, checking in. Black Booty, checking in. General Grievous, checking in. Tail Gunner, checking in. Green Hornet, checking in. Hey, what's up guys? I'm Dan H and welcome to the project. Now, a lot of my XJ loving subscribers have been asking me, what the heck has happened to Project Rec J? Well, here's the answer for you guys. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> Rec J is still right here. Haven't touched it. The last time I fixed those windows was the last project I did to it. And uh, it's been sitting here because uh, last year I acquired a WJ and then pretty much immediately after, I acquired another DOA XJ, the police XJ, and I promised my wife I wouldn't turn my yard into a junkyard. And uh, the only difference between having a junkyard and being a car enthusiast, collecting cars, is uh, I think the condition that they're in, and mainly if they run and drive. So I made sure that I got every vehicle on the property to run and drive, or at least start, including old Rec J here. So now when I take this thing apart and put it back together again, I could be confident that it'll start right up. And uh, it is blue over there. Heck, I even got blue running. And just to take it one step further, I got Green Hornet on the road and I've been daily driving it to guarantee its reliability. So now I think I'm good to go. I have my wife's blessing. I can start taking apart good old Project Rec J now and we can let this project officially commence. So first thing we gotta do is take all of this broken stuff off and make sure we have replacement parts for it so we can put it back together. So let's dig in. All right, this hood definitely has to go. I've been keeping it around because it protects everything in here. I do have a new hood I could swap on for protection. I'll probably close this video out by doing that. This fender over here was from Black Beauty. Let's see if we can take this off. I think it's only held on by this one little Torx bit. Passenger fender is off. Same deal with the driver fender. Driver fender off. All right, gotta try to take this mangled bumper off. I got a T40 from a nice heavy duty torque set. This is for impact guns. So uh, let's go ahead and we'll try this thing out. Made in voyage for this tool. Again, T40 for these bumper bolts. Nice. This one on the bottom is a T50. I hate mismatched bolts. Second bottom one. Second top one. And there we go. This is all trash. Now here's something I can't stand. Two different size fasteners for the same part. Now you better believe when I put a bumper back on this thing, it's gonna have all matching T50 Torx bit fasteners. All right, 15 millimeters should take off these bumper brackets. Nice. Hey, look at this previous owner put the vacuum ball on here. That's interesting. All right, let's take a look at our good parts so far. We got our two fenders that I'm saving. I got this good front bumper from my parts pile. Here we got two good brackets, left and right. And this is the factory location for your vacuum ball. It just screws in there with two little Torx bits right there. Easy stuff, so that's where it's supposed to be. All right, on to the next part. Look at that, got a little help already. Danny, hey, don't put that in your mouth. All right, well, looks like all we gotta do now is take off the radiator and the air box. 
We'll get to what's going on in there, but uh, we're gonna have to disconnect all the plumbing to do so. So um, I think I'm just going to start it right now, let it run for a minute, bask in its workingness, and then uh, we'll take this apart until it don't run no more. All right, one last start. Hear that hissing sound, guys? It's got a vacuum leak. There we go. Purring like a kitten. battery off all right first piece of plumbing I'm going to disconnect I'm gonna take off the lower radiator hose right out of the block gonna get rid of this whole side plumbing here and I'm glad I took a look look at this I'm leaking power steering fluid oh yeah pretty bad so um, I'll take that off and I'll make sure I buy a new power steering pump I'll save this as the core charge I'll put this back together but nice fresh plumbing there we go got it loose Starting to drip. This is my least favorite hose to pull. Always end up eating it. It's gonna gush out of the hose and the engine at the same time. Ah, not loose enough. I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't want it. Well, I get a taste of antifreeze out of my mouth. Go ahead and do this one. Upper rad hose. There we go. Also detach the overflow line. Right up meow. Pop off our e-fan. Little lock. Clip. Get these AC lines over here. Take off this clip. We'll use our decoupling tool. I got a trans line hidden down here. I'm gonna use the old screwdriver method. I can't find my other decoupling tool for this joint and my patience is wearing thin. I don't have time. I got my other other decoupling tool. We'll fix this later. There. Looks like we're on easy street now. Just gonna disconnect the air box, which it shouldn't even be screwed in since the original one was destroyed. I just went ahead and found one in my basement, slapped it together. So here we go, unlock this little elbow up here, let it rotate, air box is out. What's next, we got our PCM. PCM is out, we got our wire harness. Looks like there's two 10 millimeter grounds up here. This up here. Take out the headlight harness. There's a PCM screw. We got our horn wires, we got our fluid wires, we got our fluid hose, and this is coming up. Through the headlight hole. Pop off that Christmas tree fastener. Well, there we go. Now let's get these grounds. No! All 
All right, guys, here's where we're at. Basically, this is ground zero of Project Rec J's restoration. This unibody frame rail looks actually pretty straight. That's pretty much exactly where it needs to be. It's got a little dent in here that we'll have to bring out. But uh, this part, <laughs> this corner unibody is pretty well bashed. Now I had taken a straight bracket and you could see how far it's off. This is supposed to screw in through here and this is supposed to screw in through here. We got, uh, we got a lot of work to do to straighten this out. But fortunately, we don't have to. We are just gonna cut out this whole piece and replace it with parts from my two door. So let's see, um, should we go ahead and take this out now? What the heck, let's give it a shot. So right here from the accident, we have this piece of unibody peeled away from this frame, and you can see it was zapped together by a spot weld. Now this whole panel is held on by a bunch of little spot welds all around here, and you can see them. They are this little type of circle right here. Now to separate them, I suppose you could drill them out, but when you drill them out, it's gonna leave you with a hole and it's hard to weld a hole. What you're gonna to wanna to use to get rid of these spot welds is a special tool. Boom, we got here a spot weld cutter. I got this baby on Amazon. I will leave a link in the description below. What this does is it cuts the edge of the spot weld, then it separates the metal and you don't have to worry about a hole to fill. When you have your new piece of metal laid on, you just go ahead and tack it together right there no holes to fill, this is awesome. So let's go ahead and give this a shot. Right after I drill out my fender support. Ah. Here we go, a little bit of cutting oil. Going on to prolong the life of your bits. We only got like 10 in the pack. And here we go, we're gonna line up this little point right in the center of the spot weld, or as best as you can. And there we go, let's start it up. Oh, yeah, look at that. Wants to wander on you. Heard about that. Yeah, you know, that might be deep enough. Now, you don't want to go through both pieces of metal because then you get that hole we we're talking about. You want to avoid that. You just want to cut that first layer of metal. You know what, I'm gonna bring it up here at eye level, this way we could both see it better. Oh yeah, you can feel right when it gives right through that first piece, that feels good. Look at that. I like it. Let's continue on. Center punch is a game changer. Don't forget your glasses. This thing, it really spits. Whoopsie, I burned right through. Too strong. As you can see, once you get enough of these suckers, the whole thing just starts to wiggle and come loose. So we're gonna need to work it a little bit more, but this thing's got a lot of play now. So I'm just gonna keep on drilling, keep on wiggling. Hopefully this thing pops right out. Yeah. 
There it is, guys. We got this baby out. Let's say goodbye to this damage. Bye. <laughs> All right. Now we just gotta sandwich our new piece of metal somewhere up in here. <laughs> All right. I've definitely accumulated a lot of stuff that can go to the scrapper. While I'm scrapping, I might as well get rid of this hood too, this crushed up hood. But uh, I'm gonna take off some of this hardware first. And, uh, well, I'm not gonna use this latch, but I'll take off all this stuff. We'll send the hood to the scrapper as well. And we can put on my nice new green hood. This is really nice. Got this, uh, geez, while back. Paint's bad, but it's straight. And then, let's see, here we go. More straight parts. Look at this. Here's a straight front bumper, bumper brackets. We got that good vacuum ball here. Front fenders. And of course, no project can be complete without a header panel. So I got a header panel ready to go. All right, hood swap time. Yeah, the super clean fairy got me too. <laughs> Let's give it a shot. Let's clean up all this grime under here. All right, time to take this garbage hood out of here. It's just four 13 millimeter bolts, and it's a good idea to have a friend help you out on this. I'm alone, so I'm gonna use some extension cord. I'm just gonna jam this right under here to protect this cow piece. Now, this cow piece is trash. Just gonna give you guys an example. And uh, yeah, you're not gonna wanna let the hood slide down and bash that cow piece. You don't wanna damage the cow or your hood. So we're gonna try the old, the old fashioned way. Now I'm doing the passenger side first so I can have the hood prop hold this up while I do the driver side. Let's go ahead and take these out. One. Now there are shims in here, so be mindful of the shims. See how it just landed right on those extension cords? Yeah. All right, got that side propped up on the extension cords. Flip the hat backwards, rest it on your head. There we go. All right. Put off. Yeah, here's a good look at our shims. I just put a little piece of tape on them, hold them in place till it's time to get that hood back on. Hopefully the paint will be dried before the sun goes down. Taped over here. And again, this is our cow. It's all busted up. This is what happens when you get into an accident or you try to put a hood on by yourself. So we're gonna make sure that we put the cow on always after the hood is secured. So hood, then cow. You won't have to worry about damaging this piece of brittle plastic. It's a little tacky. Oh, son of a bee. I got a dented hood. Ain't that a bee? <laughs> 